Powering Out show. CJ Ramon, fifth year anniversary yeah. tribute to Johnny Ramon. Tonight here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. What is important about this? It's definitely important that it's a Johnny Ramon memorial. Johnny was always the driving force behind the Ramones. He was the guy that made uh, the band carry on beyond what they would have been able to carry on without him. Um, he was, he really was the guy that kept it all going. Even though it is a Johnny Ramone memorial, I know that Johnny always felt like it was more important that the Ramones um, name continued on, you know, and this is just kind of a part of that, you know, of keeping the Ramone spirit alive. And I mean, I just, I just got back from doing a, a tour in South America and then in Europe and it's amazing to me that it just keeps going on and on. It just keeps going, uh, you know, this, now with 13 years past the retirement of the band and, you know, Johnny, Dee Dee and, and Joey were all, you know, dead and, and it just keeps going. Tell me about how you got in the Ramones and tell me about, was there a magical phone call and what was your first impression? I actually just went down to an open audition. The Ramon, a friend of mine called me up who had been playing uh, in a band with Joey's brother. Um, Mickey, Mickey. yep. Uh, he called me up and told me they were auditioning bass players, and I just went down to open audition. I was the first one there, first one to audition. Um, and I uh, went back and auditioned several times over the next two months or so, and I actually got the magical call while I was in, um, I was actually in, uh, in the brig. I was, I was stationed at Camp Pendleton. Wow. Um, and at the, I was in the Marine Corps at the time and actually uh, was a deserter by that point because I was, you know, sticking around to do the auditions for the Ramones. So uh, I got actually got the phone call in in the brig from Johnny Ramone and Monty Melnick, our tour manager. And uh, Johnny asked me, you know, what's the situation? What did they say? I said, you know, they told me I'm going to have to do a month to two months in the brig and then I'm going to get a, uh, a bad conduct discharge. And um, he said, all right, well, do your time, and when you get out, you've got a job. How different do you feel that life in the Marine Corps was than being a member of the Ramones? <laughs> I, it, you know, the Marine Corps, of course, is unbelievably way more tougher, but um, the lifestyle itself is, is uh, pretty comparable. You know, the, with the Ramones, it was tough. We toured a lot and uh, for different reasons, you know. Uh, but uh, the the psychological and and physical demands in the Marine Corps were definitely a lot higher. But um, it's not an easy job to be on the road and touring, especially when you lack discipline with drinking and all of that stuff. It can get real. It can get real difficult. What did you learn about yourself being in the Ramones? That I can drink a fuck of a lot of alcohol and still get on stage and play. No, I, that's a joke because, I mean, Johnny ran, ran a tight ship. We were not allowed to drink or party or anything before we went on stage. After the show, we were, you know, allowed to do whatever we wanted to do. But, um, you know, Johnny, it was set up like that because of the problems they had in the past with alcohol and drugs in the band. So when I came in, that was the first thing Johnny said. You know, if you have any drug or alcohol problems, this pro probably isn't the job for you. And I said, no, nah, you know. I've disciplined. I was in the Marine Corps, so I was obviously disciplined. Yeah. I, I realized that I'm capable of a lot more than I ever thought I was. You know, that was that was one cool thing about it. You know, uh, I don't. Uh, I'm not haunted by self doubt or like I used to be or anything like that. Now I realize that you know, the best thing you can do is put yourself in a bad situation and see how it wor works out because most people don't even realize what they're really capable of. I'm just lucky enough to have been put into a situation where it was, I'm getting on stage in front of thousands of people. You know what I mean? And that's it, you know, and if you got it. Two highlights from your time with the Ramones. It's funny, the first show and the last show were probably the two highlights, but um, when Lemmy came up to do the song Ramones with us and playing next to him and, and singing harmonies with him and stuff, that was probably probably the second biggest highlight. I love this event. Linda Ramone, you know, she really works hard on it and, you know, every year she really does her best to put together the best event she possibly can. She's got a lot of great support from, you know, people like John Caffiero and, and Arturo Vega and just everybody who's, you know, who's working as hard as, as they can to make it happen. And what do you think about the venue Hollywood Forever Cemetery for this event? I, I think it's great. I mean, it's it's so bizarre, it's so Ramones, you know, I mean, yeah. it really is so Ramones, you know. And the people here actually treat us really great, and they do a, a great job every year of, of making, a, you know, everything go smoothly and making everybody feel comfortable. And, 
you know, to have a party in the cemetery is not an easy oh. thing to pull off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but they really do a great job. The Blaring Out Show.